All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to uh, scroll through your upcoming events. And um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to use the list global. I'm becoming a big fan of that. And uh, what I'll call this is I'll just call it event. All right. Now, what we want to do for this list, we want to, uh, how many events do you want to scroll through? Um, let's go through like 10. I, I think 10 will be far enough to look ahead. So I'm going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put a comma between each one. All right, so that's 10 of them, even though I'm going up to 9. You know, we're including 0 here. Um, you can add as many as you want, as far as I know. And I'm just going to set this to 0 for right now. Now, wherever you want to put your events at, whether you're putting them in a stack group, overlap group, or what have you, I'm just going to put a, put a text right here on my main piece, since I have a blank slate. Now, I know some of you have mentioned um, you're, you're just getting into KOWP. Watch the beginner series about moving certain objects around. Uh, some of the future videos I'll do, I'll start, you know, uh, making them look nicer I guess you could say you know instead of me just starting with a blank slate every time showing you how you can actually make it look more visually appealing but for now I just want to show you how to scroll through your events so what I'm going to do to this text item I just added I'm going to go down and find calendar so CI and now you have a couple of options uh, day start in title of first upcoming event so I'm going to go with this one. This one right here shows, you, you can tweak the, you can choose just to do the start time, just to do the end time, but all I want to see is that. Now, uh, this is already preset for me. Now, what I'm going to have to do, though, zero is the first upcoming event. So in each one of these places where I see a zero, um, CI start, basically that's the start time, for that next upcoming event, this is the end time of the next upcoming event, uh, and this is the title. Now, notice I don't have a description. It, it'll give you a preview. Like uh, I tutor math students on the side, so it, this is one of my students that I tutor. And uh, all day event, I got to put some pre-emergent in my yard, but I'm just going to roll with. Um, what this is right here. Now what you want to do is you want to put GV event in that spot. So GV event. And remember inside of that global variable event we put um, a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I need to come and change it for this one too. I'm going to do GV event and this one right here as well. That way, as I change this thing, um, when this becomes a one, that's going to be a one, and this is going to be a one. That way, the time and the dates will all, uh, the time, the date, and the particular events all going to match up. So now that I've got this, we're good with that. that that's our coding um, for that piece. Now, if you wanted to, um, you know, enter down, you can come back in here into your code. If I enter this down, come on. All right, let me use my hand. If I enter that down, you know, that way we can keep a line between them. And then maybe, you know, you want to center this up. See how it's like left aligned right now. So let's center that up. And yeah, so we need to have uh, two buttons to scroll through the events. Since I have a list global variable, I can apply a relatively quick uh, two buttons. Let me go and add a font icon real quick. And I'll just go with what I have. I'll use a fast forward. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to position this uh, position this just for the sake of the video. I'm just going to position over here. This is where I can go up in events. And then I'm going to do one where I can go back in events. So what I want to do here, I want to apply touch to this thing. So let me go to touch. And I want to toggle a global switch. I want to toggle event. And what I want to do is I want to click next value. Therefore, if it's at zero, it'll go to one. If it's at one, it'll go to two, and it'll keep on going. And automatically, what's going to happen once once it gets to the end of the list, it's going to cycle back. This is a great way to cycle through events, RSS feeds. Um, the way I used to do it was a text global variable, but since I've been messing with list, it's a lot easier to use the list to scroll between values. Big fan of the list global variable, if you can't tell by now. 
All right, so I got that one set. Now I need to come copy, let's paste. Um, this is the next one, or the, the one I want to position in the top left where I can go back. So I need to change this icon. I'll just do fast for one. You can put arrows or whatever you want. But uh, And now remember here, this touch, we need to set its touch properly. We still have the touch copied over, but now I want to go to previous. And everything should be good. As we touch these, it should change that list from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. Or we can go backwards and it should change everything up here because remember, we changed um, the start time, the end time. We put the global variables for those and then we put the global variable for our title. So everything should change as we use these buttons. Let's go test it out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use my finger on my phone. That way nothing pops up, but I'm pressing the top right corner, and as you can see, everything is changing. Um, there's another student I tutor, uh, meeting at work, uh, department meeting at work. Um, this is like something that's pulling off of my Google Calendar, I'm guessing. A uh, student I tutor, student I tutor, student I tutor, uh, a class I teach. And I think we have cycled back around. So this is like zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the next one should go back to that pre-emergent. There you go. And now we can also go backwards. So we're at zero right now. And now we're I'm gonna go up here to the top left hand corner. This is nine, eight, seven, seven. Uh oh, what happened? Okay, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then I, well somewhere in here. Okay, the reason why this one's acting funky is because of the, where I have my snap swipe. Um, I talked about this in the video too. It's where I put my KWGT widgets and things like that. Um, so maybe if I reposition this, it would work better, but um, there's zero. Let me try, I'll try it here. So there's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then I should be back to pre-emergent. There we go. So that's how you can cycle through events. Now, uh, something I'm looking here, I would probably want to put a date in these things. So while I'm in the middle of the video, let me show you how you can fix that. Um, I think I know how to fix that. Let's find out. So let's go into here. Friday, e okay, here we go. Um, all we should have to do here is come in here and add, what is it? Oh, man, I forget. Let me go look at my codes. Um, a D and an M for the month and the day. So I'm going to do Friday right here. I'm going to come and put a space. And I'm going, whoops. Okay, I knew that was going to happen. I'm using my keyboard on my computer. And the program I use does not like that. So let me back out. And let me see if this, is it going to, yep, it's still doing it. Dag on it. How about now? Okay, we're back in business. All right, so I'm using my phone. I want to see the month. So that's going to be M, M, M. And I notice like one M will give me two for month two. Two M's will give you the padding. And then if I do three of them, it'll give me Feb. If I do four of them, it'll give me the whole month. That's just a little bit of basic coding right there. I can come up here and put an extra E right there and it'll say Friday. So it's up to you how many, how much you want to see. I'm going to delete one of these M's, and then I want to see the day. So D, and I'll do two D's. Just for the sake of, um, if it was like February 2nd, two D's would say Feb 02. All right? Hope that makes sense. So let's check that. And now it looks like I'm running out of space a little bit. We can always just um, shoot, position this thing down a little bit. Whoops, not that way. That way I'm out of the way of my buttons. And I tell you what, something else too, I mean, little tidbits of information. You know now with a recent, not a recent update, but uh, KOWP does allow you to move multiple things at one time. So now I can move all three of these things as long as I select them. Now I'm getting away from that top left-hand corner I was talking about a moment ago. Let's save this, go back to the home screen, and now we should be able to cycle through these. And now we see uh, day of the week, the month, and the day of the month, and all that stuff. So. You know, now we're cycling through these very nicely. All right, that was forwards. Now I'm going to go backwards this way. Pretty cool, huh? So uh, there you have it. That's how you can cycle through 
your calendar events, you can always go back into KLWP. You can go over here to Globals. And if we check that box and go up to the top here, you can add more. Um, don't do 97. Do comma 10, comma 11, and so forth. And when you do that, depending on how many global variables you have, remember whenever you edit a global variable, it will shoot it to the bottom of your list. And since I only have one global variable, it's no big deal for me. But I need to go back and set this to something. That way the scroll will work. And now if I did this, if I went back home to the home screen, saving it, boom. Um, now it should be going, okay, here's zero. Now I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that should go back to pre-emergent. There you go. And now the same thing would happen if we went backwards. But there you have it. That's how you can scroll through your events, and that is it for this video. Hope it helped.